Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to this press conference. I would like, uh, before giving the floor to FIFA President Gianni Infantino, to give you some practical information. First of all, the translation channels. Channel 1 is English, Channel 2 is Francais, Channel 3 is Espanol, Channel 4 is German, Deutsch, Channel 5 is Rushki, Russian. And I would also like to inform you or to remind you that after this press conference, there will be another press conference. Yeah. When, when, uh... There is no Arabic channel, can someone... You have it? Channel 6. And this? No. There he is. I have not the Arabic channel on my... Sorry. Mabarif. Mish Ma'ul. Wallahi, Mish Ma'ul. Shokran, Shokran, Aneznek. <laughs> so if, if someone can help our Arabic colleagues who are sitting in the second row, would be very nice. So, just then to remind you that uh, there will be after this uh, press conference another one with the winners of the bid, United bid. Um, so stay with us. And uh, when you ask questions, please uh, say your name and the name of your organization and try to wait a bit for our translators to finish their translation. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to opening remarks from FIFA President Gianni Infantino. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fabrice. Fabrice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just first let me just say two words, please. Um, welcome. Dobro Vajalovat. Welcome to everyone here in, uh, in Moscow. Welcome to this uh, press conference. Welcome to our Congress. It is uh, a pleasure for me to uh, uh, welcome you as well directly now. Um, before uh, giving you the floor, of course, for any question you might have, I don't know why this is making this, maybe this, okay. Let me just say a couple of words. Well, the first one, uh, the first uh, thing I would like to say is very simple, is that uh, actually today uh, you have uh, a happy man in front of you, a happy president of FIFA in front of you, because uh, uh, I think we showed in this Congress and in the previous years how we are operating, how we are working, and uh, uh, in particular, of course, the bidding process for the 2026 World Cup, which uh, uh, ended today with a vote by the Congress for the first time, it's historic in FIFA, for the first time a vote by the Congress went actually extremely well and uh, I have to pay tribute to uh, the Moroccan bid uh, to its president uh, for the nice words he had uh, at the end. Uh, this shows that this was, as it has to be, a sporting competition that of course everyone wants to win uh, but uh, where of course you can also lose and when you lose and that's the good thing about football, isn't it? It's when, when you win, you are happy until the next game. When you lose, you are sad, but you are sad for one or two days and then you start focusing on the next game, on the next challenge. This is one of the philosophies of football, which is always uh, positive as well for, for real life. And I think we have shown uh, the way we are trying to conduct things. It's not always easy, it's not always simple, um, but at the end of the day the work um, pays, the transparency pays, um, 
the seriousness pays and uh, we are here uh, today looking forward to tomorrow because actually the decision today to um, um, on the host of the 2026 World Cup is something which, which will enter into force in eight years from now. Now we can really focus on what starts tomorrow, which is football on the pitch, which is what we all love, what billions of people around the world love, and this we never have to forget it. So it's much more important that uh, you write your stories on uh, the games, on the goals, on the saves, uh, on the fans, uh, on uh, the celebration which will uh, live here in, uh, in Russia in the next months. Uh, because for all the rest, you know, we, we are trying to take care as good as we can. So, again, thanks for uh, being here and um, I wish you all a fantastic World Cup and I hope you appreciate it as well. Uh, this Congress uh, the same way as uh, I did and I think certainly all the delegates as well. Thank you. First question, Richard Conway. Uh, Richard Conway from BBC. Uh, Mr. Infantino, are you breathing a, a very big sigh of relief today given the promises of revenues that the United bid uh, say they can deliver on? What does that mean for FIFA's finances going into the future? And also, you've talked a lot today about transparency, you've talked about openness, about you being a renaissance man at one point in terms of how you've uh, taken FIFA forward. But yet in April, your Secretary General was the subject of a very spurious ethics complaint uh, submitted by the task force, of which three very senior members of FIFA are part of, that was swiftly dismissed. What did you make of that ethics complaint? And do you think there should be a subsequent complaint into those who made that spurious allegation? It's funny, as uh, some always try to find uh, la petite bête, as they say in, in French, no? uh, or uh, uh, the German, they say, das Haar in der Suppe, no? the hair in the soup. I cannot say this because, uh, you know, but you are also not too far from that. I don't know if there is an English expression for that, but always to try, you know, when we have good news, let's try to find a bad one and let's try to, uh, let's try to, uh, to focus on that. You know, I think that, uh, as I said already, you know, the process uh, was there, it was transparent, um, but there was a complaint, there have been other uh, instances in which, of course, uh, the person who was in charge of the ethics investigatory chamber who followed this process from A to Z has been uh, focusing on. These are the mechanisms that I was speaking about as well that we have put in place. So there is no problem or no issue that some topics are raised if there is a feeling that they have um, to be raised. The important is to uh, deal with them, to deal with them professionally, appropriately. And this is what the Ethics Committee has certainly done. And let's not forget as well that uh, one of the things that we wanted, and I wanted in particular, uh, very thoroughly, for this bidding process is, and this also is something new that has never happened before, that not only everything is public, is clear, is open and whatever, but also that the whole process is followed by an independent external auditor. BDO was appointed, and BDO followed the whole process they will make as well. Uh, their own report. They reported to the council meeting the day before yesterday. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is what counts. We have to look, uh, I think, into the positives, which are very, very big. We have to learn, because of course not everything was perfect. It was the first time we embarked in a process like this. We learned ourselves a lot in terms of uh, the wording of the regulations, some unintended consequences of some of the wording of the regulations. But that's how it is. We started, we did it for the first time. I think something like this would have been unimaginable, unimaginable some years ago. Now it has become uh, not only reality, but, you know, it has worked. Maybe we were just lucky that it worked well, I don't know. Uh, I hope that it was also thanks to the work that, uh, that we performed and I want to congratulate really the whole team who has uh, worked on this, uh, this whole uh, uh, bidding process and I'm sure that we can take the learnings from what happened 
and uh, make it even better next time. Ah, on the, on the revenues. Well, these are projections, of course. Um, we will uh, uh, now sit down, our teams will sit down and, uh, and will start focusing as well on the World Cup 26. We see and we know where, where it will take place now. So I'm sure that uh, the commercial plans will have to be uh, elaborated. Until now, we didn't do anything as far as FIFA is concerned in this respect because uh, um, you know, we didn't know yet where the World Cup was going to uh, where the World Cup was going to take place. But having said that, you know, and, and on the money, because obviously the money is not the only element, obviously. We have to focus on, on the football, I said it many times, but the money we generate, we can reinvest it in football. And I just would like to repeat that when I started in February 2016, the budget for this four-year period was uh, five billion, as far as revenues are concerned. Five billion, right? Two months after my election, I proposed to the Congress to increase this budget because I was confident to 5.6 billion, which the Congress accepted. Now we know that we are at over 6.1 billion. And again, we are coming from a situation where many of you were writing FIFA is toxic and nobody wants to come anywhere close to FIFA and whatever. Well, you know, maybe this was the case. Certainly, it is not anymore the case. So. I hope that we can generate even more than what uh, uh, the projections of the United team bidding, bidding team is uh, for the future. Um, we'll certainly do the best that we can and put the best people to work on this, uh, on this venture to make sure that uh, we can organize a fantastic World Cup and that we can have great revenues for reinvestment in football. Good afternoon, Joaquin Marato, AS, uh, Spain. I have a question that has to do with current affairs that's interesting for all participants 24 hours before the start of the World Cup, and it has to do with uh, the termination of um, the Spanish coach's role. In Article 16 of the player statutes, it says that this cannot be done with football players, but it says nothing about uh, national team coaches. So could you uh, say something about that situation? Uh, give us your opinion, and maybe this situation of head coaches should also be regulated. Well, to be honest with you, I have no idea. I uh, learned about that uh, uh, just as I was walking over here from Congress. It's true that the player status regulations only foresees uh, events uh, that cover uh, the transfer of players uh, and uh, not the transfer of coaches, so to speak. And this is a rather peculiar situation. So, I'm sure that uh, this will uh, be spoken of a lot, especially in Spain. It's very difficult to express an opinion without knowing exactly what happened. However, I'm convinced that Luis Robiales and his entire team, we're talking about uh, football people, if they, if they make this type of decision, it's not an easy one to make, and I'm sure that they weighed all the different options. Having said all that, we all know uh, Mr. Lopetegui. We know he's an outstanding and brilliant coach. Uh, and uh, we wish him the best of luck uh, with Real Madrid. But we also wish uh, the Spanish squad uh, all the best because the World Cup is about to start. And uh, clearly something like this uh, is uh, hardly an ideal situation with which to start a World Cup. Having said that, I do uh, remember the uh, situation uh, that Italy was in in the World Cup in uh, 2006. Uh, they had many problems at the beginning and they ended up by being uh, uh, the winners. So in football, there's always this element of uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen next. So sometimes things that appear negative at first flush turn out to be positive. And we hope that'll be that way. Thank you. Martin Fernandez. President. Uh, buenas tardes, Martin Fernandez. 
Good afternoon, uh, Martin Fernandez, Global Brazil. Uh, so with this uh, World Cup, uh, with 48 uh, teams that's uh, coming towards us, uh, how are you going to address qualifiers uh, and the group uh, uh, qualifiers? Because in South America, we have uh, fewer teams to juggle. How are you going to resolve this uh, uh, puzzle? Well, these are topics that have to be uh, addressed at the level of the confederations. As you know, the confederations need to be the ones that will suggest uh, and propose qualifying uh, schemes. And uh, we need to see uh, what's the best system for us. The six and a half slots for South America, that was decided about a year ago, I think. And I think that they're already looking at uh, the matter. But yes, if we see that in that World Cup, we don't have Chile, uh, Paraguay, very important South American teams. Chile is a champion of South America. I think having a couple of extra teams from South America will definitely be something positive for the FIFA World Cup. Uh. But you also know that we're looking at uh, other types of competitions, obviously always respecting the international match calendar, and uh, we'll have to see. Let's see if we can come up with uh, uh, good ideas together with Comet Ball. We have four questions there, starting maybe with ladies first. Shukran. <coughs> Okay, I want to ask about uh, the next election. What's the program for you? For yes, me. because last uh, election I remember you uh, promised for every confederation five million dollar for four years. Yes. Do you have other offer? Well, uh, you know. I, uh, I have uh, certainly, as I was saying, a vision. Now, today, I just announced that I'm going to stand for re-election next year. Um, I know where I believe football should go and FIFA should go, uh, but this can be done only working together with all the confederations and with all the associations, and uh, we will continue to do that. I was elected based on a manifesto, on a program which did foresee a multiplication by four of the development funds, so indeed five million over four years for each member association, which is what we are doing now. And in spite of this, our finances and our financial results and our reserves will be at record height compared to the history of, um, of FIFA. So in spite of the increased investment, I wouldn't say in spite actually, I would say thanks to the concrete investment, because if you want to generate revenues, you need also to invest and you need probably to start investing. So what we have announced today, and this is independent of the election of Gianni Infantino or not, and was the Congre what the Congress has approved today, before I announced anything, was the budget for the next four years. And in the budget for the next four years, there is already an increase of 20%, which is foreseen uh, for uh, the development fund. So each association will receive six million over four years instead of five over four years, one million more. Uh, and this is not uh, linked with uh, any sort of presidential uh, uh, situation or not, because it was presented, it was sent to the associations two months ago in the, in the financial report, it was proposed, it was voted, and it will be implemented. But in addition to the forward program and development program, we'll have you know, some other ideas that we will develop for sure. Uh, the United uh, bid winning the World Cup 2026. It will be a hustle free until 2026 because of the good job which has been done by the FIFA in terms of the bidding process, instilling more transparency, readdressing the entire situation in, uh, in football, or because it has gone to the stronger bidder. And the second point of my question is, do you think a one country can host a 48 format 
in a comfortable way? Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, uh, a, b a big country, yes, a big country can host a 48 tournament. But, uh, uh, you know, one of the points that we put, uh, that I had in my manifesto and that we put in place as from the beginning of this bid, was uh, that we opened to co-hosting. Because actually a World Cup taking place only every four years, I mean, it's almost uh, a pity if it takes place only in one country and not other countries can also benefit from, uh, uh, from this excitement of, uh, of a World Cup. Having said that, uh, as, I, as I told, uh, well, I don't think it is an issue to co-host a World Cup because we need to be also responsible. And uh, if you are a responsible organization, and we've been criticized as well in the past, we need to look at sustainable development, at legacy. We need to look at what the World Cup leaves in a country. And, um, especially World Cup with 48 teams, with 14 or maybe even 16 stadiums, uh, maybe it can be shared indeed between more than one country and all countries can benefit with one, two, three or four venues which will help and boost their, uh, their football. So I think this is, this is positive and of course I'm uh, congratulating, after having thanked the Moroccan bid, I'm congratulating the United bid as well uh, for, their, uh, for their success today. And please allow me as well to say that, uh, you know, I think in particular in these days, to have a message coming from football, which says that actually Mexico, Canada and the United States together can organize the biggest sporting or social event in the world together, I think it is a nice message, and that's something we have to be uh, happy for. What was the first part? Uh, hustle free ride until 2026 because of... Hustle free ride? No, it will never be a hustle free ride. No, no, it will never be a hustle free ride. Uh, I've never witnessed a hustle free ride on anything, even the most easy uh, topic that, uh, that uh, we are dealing with is never hassle-free. There will be a lot of hassle everywhere, but okay, now we focus on this World Cup in Russia, then we will enjoy the World Cup in 22 in Qatar, and then uh, we'll think about the 26 World Cup. For your information, there are seven people on my waiting list, so some of them are raising sure. their hand. So. Just I, for your information. I will be short. I will try to be short. No, it's more no, for... Sorry. So then, <laughs> I have more questions. Sorry. Yeah. Don't take it as being impolite if I'm short. President if I can. President from Mexico. A question. Two questions, actually. With the uh, nomination of the United bid for, in order to host 2026, uh, would uh, FIFA perhaps hope that uh, the U.S. would desist uh, their um, investigation into FIFA's handling of funds in the past? And uh, what is your opinion on Mexico as a host that has that is now actually going to host its third World Cup, something that has never before happened? Well, of course, I'm very, very happy for Mexico. My the first Congress as FIFA president was in Mexico City. So I'm very well familiar with Mexicans' passion for football, and the Estadio Azteca is really one of the few stadia in the world that looks back at such an illustrious history. But uh, when it comes to the investigations, and well, I can confirm that this has nothing to do with those investigations. As far as FIFA is concerned, our internal investigations have run their course, and we have sent out all the documentations and all the documents to the relevant authorities in Switzerland and the United States. And personally, I have to say that I'm very pleased uh, that every authority or that public authorities are helping us to fight against corruption or events and deeds that should have no place in football. We are an association under uh, private public law and there's an, 
of course, a limit uh, as to what we can do. So whether it's uh, authorities in Switzerland, United States, Mexico, or wherever, when they step up and help fight, help us fight against corruption and similar topics, then of course we're very pleased, and I. Uh, I'm profoundly grateful to all of them. They can count with my help, the help of FIFA, in every sense and in every place. Thank you. Hello, I'm Paul Ledegaard from the Norwegian football magazine Jose Mar. Uh, in the opening speech today, uh, you also uh, praised uh, yourself, uh, your, your administration, for having uh, cleaned up FIFA uh, with uh, strong governance uh, principles and so on. Uh, but also during your reign, uh, uh, a lot of uh, chairmen of the independent committees was removed at the last Congress. Uh, and one of them, Miguel Maduro, who was a former chairman of the uh, Governance Committee, he uh, publicly said that he was pressured by uh, Thomas Wesel and Fatma Samura to, to, to make uh, uh, Vitaly Mutko eligible for the FIFA Council. Uh, do you consider that to be a, an advancement in government, governance principles? I think we did uh, uh, a lot in terms of governance in FIFA. Uh, I think we are not perfect. Certainly we are not perfect. Certainly we can improve. Uh, I think well, nobody is perfect um, and we are far from that. But we try. We try to do it with sincerity and in the best interest of football. I think that uh, Mr. Mutko, if you allow me to answer, I think that Mr. Mutko uh, finally was uh, uh, not declared eligible um, by the governance committee. And this shows that the mechanisms which are in place were there. I want to reiterate once again, and I said this last year and I repeated it a hundred times, that nobody was removed. Terms came to an end. And we have absolute personalities with absolute integrity and with a curriculum such as FIFA has never seen before, who are members now chairing or members of our independent organs. And, uh, you know, uh, you can be very, very sure that they take their job very seriously. Uh, they don't want to uh, make publicity for themselves. They speak with their decisions and with their acts, and that's what they have to do. And I'm very happy and proud of what we have been able to realize in these two years in this in this respect. Thank you. Question there. <clears throat> Hi. So, Hi. Uh, Rob Harris from Associated Press. A uh, couple of quick ones first. Um, have you had a call yet from uh, Donald Trump? Let, let, let me check. I had eight, eight missed calls only. I don't know if one of the eight is his. I don't know. I will tell you. We'll find out. I don't think so. Um, on uh, triple hosting, will all three countries now make it to the World Cup? Will they all get automatic places? Um, and is there any chance of the formula changing? And linked to that, you, you've praised how the triple hosting helps to bring three countries together. Is there any way that you, you, know, you have objectives to use football to bring the Middle East back together? You go across uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar so often. Are you, is that an objective given the ongoing conflict uh, and disputes between the nations diplomatically? Dear Rob, if I would have the faculty to bring the Middle East together, uh, I would uh, do whatever I can to do so because, uh, uh, because I think they deserve it, the world deserves it, and this must be independent of whatever football discussion can take place. If football can assist or help in this respect, uh, then uh, of course it would, be, uh, it would be welcome, but that's of course not the purpose of football. This is this I say it as a person, as a person who cares about what hap what's happening in the world a little bit and who sees that uh, maybe with football, thanks to football, we can uh, indeed try at least to build some uh, bridges and to bring some understanding. I mean, somebody has to do it and, uh, uh, you know, we try, um, of course, to, uh, to, uh, to help. <clears throat> um, what was the other? Yeah, will they qualify directly or not? This, I don't know, this, you know, uh, CONCACAF has now six and a half spots, or slots, spots or slots? Slots, spots, whatever. Slots, spots, slots for the World Cup, six and a half, plus one half 
for uh, uh, the host confederation. So they have seven, but they have six full and two halves, so to say. And uh, it's up to CONCACAF to look into that and to see how they want to organize their qualification for this. And we'll certainly have a discussion about that in the weeks to come. <clears throat> well, as you know, we have a different model now as well uh, in terms of organization of World Cups. We don't operate anymore with the old LOC system where you had an LOC which uh, was basically take no taking over the World Cup from FIFA and having to reinvent everything every four years. We have changed that. We have put in place a new structure through a new vision. I mean, it's not that new because it's something that I know since the Euro 2004 in UEFA, um, whereby FIFA now will take over responsibility for the organization of the, of the World Cups. We start uh, uh, with 22 together with, uh, with the Qataris in this respect and we move then to the next level in uh, 26. So we will discuss that. Of course, we'll discuss with the host associations, but that will all, all ultimately be a FIFA decision on which stadiums, which games, how many games are played here and there. They have made an agreement amongst themselves, uh, but uh, ultimately it will be up to FIFA to, to decide that. Two questions on the third row, and then we go to Jamil. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Hello, Mr. President. A question from Morocco. In your introductory remarks, you had said that you are a happy man now, a proud man. And I would like to know, are you proud because of what you have achieved or because the bid United will actually provide FIFA with a jackpot of uh, more $14 billion? I am actually a happy man. Why? Because today I have the opportunity to take stock. And I'm proud, while at the same time feeling humble as well. As well. But I'm proud of everything we've achieved in the last couple of years at FIFA. I believe we were able to demonstrate that. I think we were able to shore it up with this process and the candidacies and the bids. And I'm happy that this uh, procedure took place in the best possible circumstances. My duty as a FIFA president was to ensure that uh, things happen in accordance with the rules with the, within the system established that were set up so that we could make this journey to this day without uh, without any second thoughts, without any uh, qualms, in order to ensure that the member associations of FIFA can vote in accordance with their conscience, with their convictions, and adjudicate the hosting country for 2026. We've done all this in full transparency in front of the world. And I believe that that is unique. That is unique, and I'm absolutely happy because of that. Yes, good afternoon, President. Vito Malfitano from Mar del Plata in Argentina. Amalfitano. Are you? Yes, son of Italian immigrants. The question is as follows. If Mexico, Canada, and the United States host 2026, and uh, Therefore, the uh, American continent, uh, that would mean that uh, the joint bid by Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay for 2030 might uh, be left uh, uh, trailing there or would not be uh, uh, coming forward. I would like to know about uh, human rights as well. This is a question. This answer to Palestine to amend the Article 3 and to reject this uh, submission, how you uh, see that? Well, we decided roughly an hour ago to uh, decide on who will host 2026. And it was a very, very uh, elaborate procedure, a very complex procedure that led to this point, and we are absolutely pleased with that. And we are not going to, and uh, we're not going to start thinking about 2030 today. Let's first enjoy this World Cup. We've done our homework. We've done things 
well. Everybody has recognized that. And I think uh, within uh, the uh, appropriate time, we will then start thinking about 2030. As far as human rights are concerned, well, I think we have uh, clearly explained our position. Uh, Fernando Sarney really explained that very, very well in his intervention. What we're doing and why the Council unanimously decided to um, recommend to reject this amendment submission because it would actually endanger everything that we have done in order to shore up human rights and to defend your human rights. And we've done a lot in this sense, and you're probably also well aware of that. Human rights are absolutely fundamental. And uh, at FIFA, this is uh, something that is well embedded, especially since we've started the reform process. We cannot solve all the problems in the world with respect to human rights. We have an influence, though. And I think that some of uh, the consequences, some of some concrete examples are already emerging in certain countries of this attitude. And certainly, I believe that we can be uh, moderately proud as well of what we're doing. There's still a lot to do. That goes without saying. But we will continue to fight for human rights all over in the world. And also in keeping and in knowledge that dialogue is always the right answer and not confrontation or attacking. Hello, Mr. Fantino, Jamil Chade from South São Paulo, Brazil. Um, two, hello, two quick questions. Um, you mentioned that, uh, in fact, FIFA is not uh, toxic. But if we take the, uh, the uh, sponsors that you have, uh, it shows very clearly that there was a shift. Uh, out of the 20, you have 12 either Russians or Chinese. Uh, if you take Westerns, you only have five. So is FIFA uh, changing, let's say, its access to other places of the world in terms of uh, money-wise? And still on the qualifications, do you think that 48 will transform the qualification in South America into a irrelevant tournament? Thank you. <clears throat> no, I think that... Uh the qualifications in South America are uh, uh, the hardest qualification in the world, in any case. And uh, probably even if you would have nine out of ten who qualified, it would still be tough to qualify. Uh, I don't know how uh, convenable things to organize the qualifications, but uh, uh, you know, I think they will be as, excited, as exciting as, uh, as ever. And we had, again, the, the proof this year with those who qualified and those who didn't, and those who qualified in the last, last match day. And, and so on. Uh, what was the first one? Sponsors, ah, the sponsors, the sponsors, the access. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just, we just. I mean, we just. The Congress just decided to uh, bring the World Cup to uh, North America, and you're telling us we move to uh, to Asia. I don't know. Uh, you know, we uh, maybe that uh, all the potential sponsors from the western part of the world had, are already on board, and that's why. We have to go to see other territories. But let's not forget that FIFA is a worldwide organization. It's a worldwide organization. We have members, we have 211 members from all over the world, and we have partners from all over the world. And uh, we are very proud and very happy of all our partners. And uh, I think that the future will show us that we'll become even more global than uh, what we are today. We have still uh, three questions remaining. One here, one on the first row, and the last one for Kiranic. Good afternoon, President Infantina. Salvador Gonzalez from MBS uh, Mexican Television. I have a couple, couple of questions for you. Would you like to see another uh, World Cup fine, uh, final in Azteca Stadium, where Maradona and Pelé were extremely successful? And could you send a message to Rafa Marquez, a player that will now be playing his fifth World Cup, just like Lothar Mateus, uh, Gigi Buffon, and Antonio Carvajal? Well, of course, I need to congratulate him on uh, participating in five World Cups. Uh, that's obviously uh, a huge milestone. Gigi Buffon would have liked to be here and reach his sixth, but uh, unfortunately, Italy is not with us. 
it's uh, sad for him and for a few others, I'm sure. But yes, of course, uh, five World Cups uh, is, uh, is a huge milestone. Oh, and, and your other question also slipped uh, my memory. What was your first question? Oh, the Azteca Stadium and another final there. Well, uh, let's uh, look it over. As I've already said, that the Azteca Stadium is uh, a historic stadium uh, where many pages of football history were written. Uh, it's a stadium that lives and breathes uh, football, and it actually takes your breath away when you uh, step into it. I think that uh, doubtless uh, the Stadio Azteca will be one of the uh, stadia of uh, the World Cup 2026, but it's premature to talk about which will host the final. We'll have to ask that to other people later on, but in the end it'll be FIFA that decides, obviously. Hello, Mr. Infantino. Lee Wellings here from Al Jazeera English. Uh, in April, President Trump sent a tweet saying it would be a shame if countries lobbied against the United States before the vote had happened. Are you concerned about political interference from Mr. Trump particularly? I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned about anything. I'm not concerned about any uh, political interference of anyone. I think we have, uh, I think we have uh, provided uh, with our procedure the opportunity for all our members to make up their own mind uh, based on facts, based on figures, based on reports, based on bid books. And uh, from that point of view, I'm very happy how the process went. Let me also add that compared to what happened uh, maybe in the past, for Olympic Games or for World Cups or for even European Championships, well, we didn't, I didn't see here uh, so many uh, heads of state or whatever trying to lobby uh, for, for their country. So I think this shows that at the end of the day, what we wanted to achieve, which is, you know, let's look at these bits in a serious way, let's screen them, let's bring the result, that this is the right way forward don't tolerate political interference. So are you worried about Mr. Trump, who may try to do what he wants, regardless of FIFA's rules? I'm not worried about anything. At the least, I'm worried about, uh, about uh, the President of the United States, or of Mexico, or Canada, uh, Prime Minister, or anyone else. I think else. you'll try and take over. I think the question was answered. <laughs> I don't think anyone tries to take over FIFA. FIFA belongs to football and to the members of FIFA. Thank you. So. As announced, the last question is for Kieran Ranich. Fabrice, thank you very much. Jenny. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question. Zinedine Zidane decided to quit at Real Madrid when he was ahead. After the, uh, what you told us today about the success of the last two years, why do you want to continue as FIFA president? The stress, the responsibility, the, uh, the lack of family time, the criticism? All the rest. You want another four years of it. Why? I want another four years of it because um, I believe in what I do. I believe in what I can do for FIFA and for football. I uh, believe in uh, the people who uh, have worked with me from all over the world in the last two years. I believe in the eyes of these children in Haiti, in Sao Tome, in Rwanda, in Myanmar, who, when you give them a ball, they shine. I believe that there is still a lot that we can do if we remember what we have to do, which is focus on football and on football development. And uh, I feel as well a lot of uh, support from uh, many around the world who want to see a strong FIFA, who want to see a FIFA who is present, a FIFA who is there to help them, a FIFA who is there who, to help them addressing their issues uh, about football development, their issues about development of infrastructure, of programs, um, we have created a foundation, 
FIFA Foundation, whereby we want to take responsibility as well for our social action that must be stronger than what it was. And there is a lot to do. We have all the legends who participate in this venture, and they want to give back something to football. And for all of these people, I feel that it is definitely worth uh, running for another four years because uh, it is a challenge. And uh, uh, once, uh, I don't know if it was you or one of your colleagues asked me, did you ever regret being FIFA president? You, huh? And I answered, I think, yes, at least 100 times every day. But at least one million times every day, I say well, how fantastic this is and what we can move and what we can do. And this is, I think, uh, uh, really uh, the best uh, one can dream about. And uh, I really hope that uh, uh, we can continue working together and, and show to the world what we can do.